So Desert Treasure 2 Grandmaster Quest will be out this summer and Jagex proposed a new Zaros theme prayer book, new best and slot rings, new magic armor, and a wear axe as the rewards. So these are currently in a beta right now where you can go on the beta worlds and test them out and provide feedback for Jagex. The biggest thing I'm covering is the prayers and I'll talk about the rest a bit later. This is a bonus video. If you like these kind of reviews or analysis videos of upcoming updates, let me know by liking this video. Might do more in the future from time to time. Okay, let me just give you an overall TLDR of the current forms of these prayers and items first because I know a lot of y'all work 30 hours a day and got 10 kits to raise. So the new Zara's Prayer book so far looks pretty good. It is overall stronger than the regular book by overall feeling of 10% in terms of power but this prayer book has some drawbacks that makes using it harder than the regular prayer book the drawbacks are a higher prayer requirement a heavier prayer drain no protect on prayer and a weaker protection prayer this means that in more complex bossing situations or even pvp this prayer book will require decent pvm experience to use properly or pvp experience also for pvp you will be risking more using this prayer book as there's no protect item as for the new equipment the new rings are complete upgrades from the dk's rings the virtus armor is not better than ancestral usually but if you are using ancient magics for pvp or pvm like slayer then it is better than ancestral as it boosts damage on ancient magics more than ancestral the new axe seems to be more of a PvP weapon, but it might have some potential uses in PvM. But it doesn't really stand out for me though. This one is a bit mysterious. There's also the scepter add-ons, kind of like the Karis add-ons with the gems in Race 3. It will have different effects to extend each of the Ancient Magic's effects, like longer freeze or more healing. So let's expand on the new prayers. There's a lot to talk about. I will talk about them in groups. You have the standard combat boost prayers. You have the new protection prayers, the new overheads, the new vow prayers, and the new utility prayers. So five groups. So the new combat boost prayers for the three styles are offensively stronger than the older counterpart, but lack the defense boost, and it seems to drain faster. But as they are now from testing, it is pretty good. I do notice my kill times overall were faster in most places that I did use these boost prayers in the test by a significant amount. Overall, I think these new combat prayers are pretty good as is, but I do think the prayer drain should be a bit slower and that their prayer requirements should be in the high 80s, at least for the best ones. The best combat prayers in this book are Decimate, giving you 20% attack and 30% strength which is 7% more than Piety. Annihilate, which gives you 20% range attack and 30% range strength, which is 7% more range strength. And Vaporize, which gives 25% magic attack and 4% magic damage. Yes, a prayer offensive that actually gives magic damage. This is the first of its kind. Again, all these boost prayers give no defense boost, so that is a pretty sizable drawback. Now we talk about the protection prayers from the new spellbook. It is a worse version because instead of reducing 100% damage, it only reduces 90% of damage but has a chance to recoil a teeny amount of damage back to your opponent. So this is a big deal as I would say it is overall the biggest drawback of this prayer book. So depending on whether or not they adjust these prayers, protection prayers coming up, what I say now may be inaccurate in future revisions. So keep an eye on that. This is the prayers to look out for them changing. For example, if you were to use this prayer book and Inferno Triple Jazz or even just the waves, it's going to hurt because the jazz will hit for constant up to tens as they max at over 110 damage and have very high accuracy, meaning you will take too much damage. And even for the average Inferno goer with multiple capes, it's probably not going to be viable to use the new prayer book there. Generally, places where you get attacked by multiple NPCs or take heavy damage, this prayer book will either be too difficult or require exceptional gameplay to make it worth it. For example, at Gauntlet, 
the prayer book barely improved my overall time because Hunliff just did so much damage that it ended up eating more than usual. Normally, you can activate this prayer called Metabolize, and it would reduce your food cooldown by one tick, which is 0.6 seconds. But Hunliff turns off your prayer and Metabolize requires at least 15 seconds of constant activation to work. So it ended up not working, and that meant it wasn't any better than me doing Hunliff using the regular prayer book at Gauntlet. Personally, I think that the protection prayer should probably be 95% because this is basically the biggest setback overall. And even an experienced PVM like me found the current version to be a fair challenge to get used to. 90% protection prayers could easily overwhelm even a seasoned PVM or PVP as you have to adapt to eating a lot more often than usual and it'll completely ruin what you are used to. So there is a bunch of new overheads in this prayer book, and I feel like these are probably going to get tweaked a lot, except for Gambit. I think Gambit is pretty good as is. This is the one I use most often in the beta as it gives a flat 8% accuracy boost when it is activated. This prayer works nicely for experienced players that can flick the prayer in between attacks and protection prayers for various situations, like specking a boss or a player. Or just maximizing long-term damage. The other ones are tricky, being Rebook and Vindication. I think Rebook will most likely see some uses as it acts like a vengeance, but uses prayer. Probably will see more uses in PvP than PvM, but it is a nice free DPS towards the end of a boss fight. Although it is very marginally useful, I'd say. Vindication is a wonky one as it is similar to Redemption that it heals you when you go under a certain uh, health point, but it gives you extra damage boost upon its activation. Vindication is really sketchy, and I think it's probably going to be used more in PvP, as the healing is weaker than Redemption, so it might make certain Redemption strategies for PvM like Fispula Portal not that viable. The next set of prayers is the Vows Prayers, a completely new concept that the old counterpart does not have, so this one will require more brain power to understand and quite frankly, I'd say I don't fully comprehend it myself. But I'll give you what I know. You can only activate one vow at a time. Overall, the Fumas vow, the Umbra vow, and the Glacies vow is pretty good and the Kuro vow is basically dead content. Umbra vow is really nice because it reliably drains opponent's defense by 10% of the damage that you deal, up to a 15% of the overall boss's defense, meaning places like Raids 3, at high levels especially, or in big groups, you can drain the defense of all the bosses quickly without needing BGS or Warhammer, or if you miss. I used this one a lot and noticed the difference quickly. You will probably need to deal 100 to 200 damage to reach the defense reduction cap for most bosses using this prayer, so it's pretty solid for high HP bosses. Uh, especially if you do miss your defense spec reduction special, at least you have a backup. Glazy's Vow is nice for extra bonus damage as it has a chance to proc damage based on what you hit as magic damage to your opponent. But it does cause prayer to keep it going forever, so you have to make sure you're in a situation where you know prayer is plentiful. But that's the only drawback. Humus Vow is pretty interesting and useful. It gives you a significant bonus damage by extracting the poison that you have and dishing it to your opponent as bonus damage. The poison damage to you will gradually lower as you continue using this prayer and also the bonus damage applied to your opponent will also gradually lower per hit. This prayer definitely has some interesting applications at places like Scorpio or Zami where you could trade off the use of carrying your poison in order to kill the bosses faster. Especially at Zami, you do get a lot of restores, so sometimes if you have extra restores, turning on this prayer won't really be too bad. You know, quicker Zami kill sounds good to me. I believe it'll work well on Zora and Vorkath as well for more experienced PVMers, as you can use anti-poison or carry me spell instead of using anti-venom to turn the venom into poison and then using the Fumis Vow to deal extra damage. This Vow definitely has speedrun potential as well for PBs or maybe combat tasks because you can prepare poison ahead of time. Say you get poisoned or venomed and it hits like 20. You can use that anywhere to improve kill times of bosses of PvP because you can start off hitting stupid hard with the bonus damage of the poison. 
Lastly, we have the Kuro Vow, which heals you very minimally for every damage that you do to your opponent. It heals so little that it's basically not worth it because you drink prayer so much and you barely get any HP back. I'm guessing the Kuro Vow will be changed quite a lot, like completely, and I can't imagine them buffing the healing percentage as well because if they do, then we're gonna kind of have Soul Split again, but I feel like the prayer book is already so strong without the need to heal. Lastly, we have the utility prayers. Ruinous Grace lets you run by using prayer energy or run energy. It's pretty useful for just moving around doing clues or even bosses that require a lot of run, but it'll probably not be too worthwhile for most bossing as you will drain your prayer so much more with it on, on top of all the other prayers that you might want to have on. Most of them are pretty much the regular prayer book utility prayers, so not much to say about those, but there is Metabolize, which I did talk about earlier. Metabolize is really cool because if you're doing bosses where you are predominantly using hard food like sharks, manta rays, carambons, then this prayer is super nice for reducing cooldown. It was really good at core for my method as I often eat a lot of food and I managed to get close to 11 kills an hour on my first try, which is easily better than my current in-game PB of 10 and change an hour. Overall, this prayer book is at a solid state, but you definitely could do with some adjustments. Particularly, the prayer drain is too demanding and the protection prayer could be less punishing. The crew vow definitely needs a complete rework, but overall it is taking good shape. And I do like the direction as it is providing more power at the cost of being more skillful to pull off. Now the prayer section is over, let's talk a bit about the Virtus armor. Do remember the 4% damage bonus of the Virtus piece only applies when using Ancient Magics. So it is not better than Ancestral set generally because Ancestral has 2% damage on each piece. But that applies to any time you use magic. This is overall the second best in slot magic gear based on its magic accuracy being the same as Ancestral. And seeing as it will come from the new bosses, which is going to be fairly easy to camp, I imagine... Uh, at least easier to camp than say chambers it will probably be at a price point or grinding option for iron man that will fit snugly before ancestral this armor is best in soft for any time you use ancient magics so normal inferno runs barraging slayer tasks and pk but again it's pretty much ancestral without the universal magic damage boost i want to talk a little bit more about the new best and slot rings that's probably going to be coming out so these rings are essentially straight upgrades of the dk's rings you will also need the dk's rings to make these new rings combining it with a unique drop from the new bosses there will be four new bosses so i have a feeling each boss will drop a specific piece for a specific ring just because of the names that they're going for in these rings for example, Ring of True Blood is a plus 12 melee strength ring, so it will be upgrade from the Berserker. Probably going to come from the Blood-themed boss. The Ring of True Ice gives 15 magic accuracy and 2% magic damage, so this is the first time ever that a ring gives magic damage. Also, we have Ring of True Smoke, 10 range accuracy, and 2 range strength. Also, first time ever that we have a ring that gives range strength. And also we have Ring of True Shadow. It gives 12 slash bonus and plus 4 melee strength. So the Ring of True Shadow seems to be the least useful, but it will still be used for art light specking. So good for if you want to do AFK Corp. The other three rings are pretty straightforward to use. Anywhere you normally use your Berserker Ring, your Archer's Ring, or Sears Ring, you would just use these new rings instead. I do want to pay special attention to the Ring of True Ice because the Shadow can multiply that 2% magic damage into 6%. So yeah, that Shadow is going to get a beefy boost compared to say the Ring of True Smoke or the Ring of True Blood which will probably only give one max hit to melee and range respectively. I want to talk a bit about the Soul Reaper Axe. So this axe here gives you 134 slash and 28 stab and 66 crush so it's definitely more of a slash slash crush item but unfortunately Jagex hasn't released any bosses recently in years actually that is focused on being weak to slash or crush hence why a lot of these famous slash items like whips and sights just aren't really being used that much anymore 
so compared to traditional slash and crush weapons where does this axe lie i would say for slash weapons it's probably somewhere between a whip and a scythe and it makes a lot of sense because these bosses are grandmaster reward bosses and you gotta uh, kill each one for a piece according to this block here so the effort definitely is going to be a higher than probably just getting a whip or buying a whip for sure but it's definitely not going to beat the site though for sure in uh, the bosses where slash is activable so right around the middle and as for crush option i guess it's probably like near the bludgeon probably a bit better than the bludgeon maybe a bit under the mace and under the scythe for sure once again so that's about it for the pvm side that i can think of so maybe one of these new bosses here coming out will be weak to either slash or crush that'll be nice because otherwise this soul reaper axe doesn't even seem remotely useful for pvm right now also it's a slow attack rate too five attack speed which is same as a scythe but definitely nowhere near as uh powerful as a scythe i would say but it does have a special effect every attack deals a damage to the player and provides a buff I can stack up to five times players gain six percent bonus strength level per stack capping at 30 percent you can consume all the stacks of the buff to attack with six percent bonus accuracy and strength per stack but it also heals you by eight eight points per stack whenever you use it back all right i think that's about it i think i might make another video for when jagex talks more about the new bosses that will come alongside desert treasure 2 so stay tuned for that in the coming months, I imagine. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.